Hey, it's me. You know, I've been thinking a lot about something I read in this spiritual text. How our souls choose to come to earth. Bringing with them specific tasks that they want to accomplish. It's like there's this plan laid out for our lives. So it's said that before we're born, our souls often get to discuss our future journey with higher spiritual beings who guide the process. We actually have a say in how our destiny unfolds based on how much we've learned and how well we can understand things from a spiritual perspective. When we're in the spiritual state before birth, we have a wider view compared to when we're in our physical bodies. Like we get that life's purpose isn't just about being comfortable or collecting material things. It's about growing spiritually and reaching a higher state of existence, a higher consciousness, kind of like perfect happiness that we can't fully experience here on earth. Our souls know somehow that only through spiritual effort can this deeper knowledge reach our everyday minds. But the thing is, once we're here living our lives, it's not easy to keep that awareness. Difficulties, tests, challenges, even what we might see as disasters, maybe are necessary to steer us onto the right path again, to get us to remember. When we're born, our memory of that spiritual world fades like pretty much automatically. It's like starting fresh. And that's important. Spiritual awareness has to be earned through our own efforts. It happens when we take the time to look within ourselves, not just looking outside or thinking in vague terms, but really digging deep, doing that deep work to understand the truths of our existence. Only within our own souls can we recognize the special meaning and purpose of our lives, along with those tasks that we need to fulfill. You know how easy it is to get caught up in the out outside outward aspects of life like chasing after possession status surface level achievements well i think when we do that we lose touch with the inner meaning that i'm talking about like sometimes people go through life after life without much progress because they're stuck focusing on the wrong things the soul understands the challenges of earthly life and knows that if we live in a way that's in alignment with higher truth from a spiritual point of view, we can develop so much faster here than we could in the spiritual realm. It's precisely because life on earth is more challenging that that happens. We deal with having physical bodies and all the temptations and distractions that come with that. And we've forgotten our spiritual memories and need to regain them. Before we come into this life, it's said that our souls might even ask those higher beings, like, please help me, not just with your strength and guidance, but if you see me not fulfilling my potential, send me challenges, help wake me up, because when these come, I'll have a better chance. I'll look at my life differently than if everything just went smoothly and all my wishes were granted. So maybe it's important to recognize that a lot of the events in our lives that seem to repeat themselves were actually chosen and planned by us when we had that broader perspective before we came into this world, knowing that that could be really helpful. Like sometimes a very ambitious soul might even ask for a particularly difficult life, understanding that the pain experienced is small and short compared to the growth achieved. I think it's something to think about, don't you? Like, what if we were to take time to reflect on our lives and the trials that we faced? Maybe ask ourselves, like, whether these challenges were chosen by us to make sure we don't miss something we need to learn or fulfill. Think about what we still need to discover and resolve within ourselves. If we search earnestly, I think the answers are there. We'll start to sense them and gain insights. 
Sure, it's a practice, right? It takes time. Meditation or quiet reflection doesn't just come naturally. It needs willpower and perseverance for sure. We have to push through our negative tendencies. The reward, though, on the other side is so fulfilling. I think it's worth the effort. When the spiritual realm recognizes that we're making sincere efforts, guidance comes to help us achieve that which we intend. When a soul realizes after life is over and it's left the physical body that it hasn't accomplished everything it planned, it's said that it's often allowed to complete that work in the spiritual state. The finished tasks already started and to shed some burdens. So as a spirit, we can continue to be involved with family or groups we intended to work with, but it's much more challenging. Like on the one hand, it's easier because our clear vision is restored. We remember what it's all about. But on the other hand, it's harder because we can't work as effectively from that state. So like, for example, as people living here on earth, we can influence others effectively by overcoming our own faults, by modeling, by being an example, right? Setting an example is always more convincing than words or trying to force others to change, no matter how right or well-intentioned we are. The more we overcome our own weaknesses, embrace these higher truths within ourselves, and learn to love, the closer we get to others in the ways that matter. And that kind of like direct influence, indirect influence rather, eventually becomes evident to everyone. Why, you know, people that have done this work, they are so attractive, people are drawn to them. But as spirits, we can't do that. We can't do that as easily because most people aren't open to receiving a spirit right, or what a spirit is trying to convey through inspiration. Even if they do sense it, they often misinterpret it, forget it, brush it off, right? So it's, it's much more difficult and takes much longer to finish the task we began on earth if we can accomplish them at all. We might even need another life on earth to complete them. So I think this is why every person as it said, creates the world in which they live. We build our homes in the spiritual realm after our life here, and we build our future lives on earth. Every action, thought, and feeling shapes our reality. I think there's value in contemplating this and thinking deeply about it, because it shows that hardships are self-created. And because of that, they contain the remedy we need within them. So understanding that it helps us grasp the vastness of wisdom in the way life works. And it becomes clear that destiny and free will aren't opposing forces. They're connected, they're intertwined. The events that life brings are manifestations of our own inner states and choices. If, out of ignorance, we create unfavorable situations, we have to work to dissolve them ourselves. And that can only happen when we're on a path of self-knowledge, self-search, self-understanding, know thyself. To do the work... I think that's where willpower comes in. And I know people, you know, when you bring up the word willpower, you'll hear someone say, well, yeah, that's well and good. Some people are born with strong willpower, though, and others simply aren't. Like, how can someone who doesn't have any willpower make use of it, put it to use? I think this is, that's a wrong way of looking at willpower. Willpower is just like any other quality. It has to be developed and built up by ourselves. It just it just needs to. If someone is born with strong willpower, maybe they did the work to acquire it at some point in the past so they can bring it forward into this life, right? Use it as a valuable asset in their current life. So good for them. 
right? If that hasn't happened for you yet, that's okay. You can work on it in this life. And the same goes for all the other qualities, like the ability to love, to be tolerant, kind, generous, like anything else. I think we each come into the world with varying levels of those qualities having been developed. But the thing is, it's possible for each and every one of us to develop all the parts because we're never asked to do the impossible. There's no such thing. Willpower, I see it as a result of understanding, knowledge, and then the decisions that come from that. So each of us has a certain amount of strength and it's up to us how we channel that strength. It's possible that we waste that strength on efforts that don't build anything meaningful or, you know, if we give into unhealthy emotions that drain our strength, drain our energy, get into negative cycles. And that takes up a lot of energy. On the other hand, energy used for positive goals is always replenished. It's always renewed. When your strength is caught up in unproductive emotions, it gets depleted. Right? Low frequency emotions are gonna deplete that energy but that's why you often see these people who it seems like they're always doing good and they seem to have this boundless amount of energy like those who understand what life's about channel their energy wisely and adjust their inner direction accordingly whereas someone you know who's just drifting along without thinking about life's true meaning it's easy for their energy go into, to go into the wrong channel and get used up without that sufficient renewal. So I kind of think that the first step in terms of developing willpower is meditating on it. Right? Because for someone who has gained some understanding, it's easier to draw the necessary conclusions and make the decisions that follow. Okay, it's, it's an inner decision and change to say, okay, I'm here on earth for a reason. Maybe I lack the willpower to fulfill my purpose as well as I could by overcoming all my resistances. But I'm able to ask for this willpower because deep down, I want what's good. So I'm going to take the time and make the effort to reflect on these things and open myself to greater understanding. I'm going to regularly devote some time to my personal growth. And if I find that at first they still lack the willpower, then I'll bring this challenge into my meditation, into my self-reflection, and seek support for, from whatever resources are available. Be it spiritual guidance, maybe supportive friends, helpful practices, like whatever that looks like, to help my willpower grow. Everyone can do that, right? That amount of willpower and self-discipline is available to all of us. You don't have to start with the most difficult things, right? You, You don't start building a house with the roof. You know, you start with the foundation. So the idea is to shift your energy and focus. Because when someone finally makes the decision and sticks to it, a decision that's not too difficult or not too much for them. Okay, that's the caveat. Then additional support always seems to come, making the further and you know what perceivably is, is more difficult steps of development seem easier. I mean, that's something like I can promise you. I've seen it again and again. And I'm sure you've seen it happen or experienced it yourself. So even if you initially lack willpower over time, you can develop just as much as those who seem to be born with them. Those who understand what's at stake and where to shift their main focus and who bring this understanding from a superficial level into deeper levels will be able to take the necessary decisive step. It happens through regular practice. Of course, it has to be learned. The decision to develop your willpower, though, is a significant one. So if you feel like you don't have enough willpower, maybe you lack a deep understanding of what's really going on. You know, you might have a vague sense of it, but 
maybe something inside resists and clings to old comfortable patterns, old fear-based operating systems. You know, you, maybe you feel divided inside, like one part of you knows something, but then the other part doesn't act on it. You might not really want to know. That's why the first step is to deepen your understanding, to work on that first so that your whole self is engaged. You're coming at this with your whole self. When you do that, and you can, if you have just a little time and a little effort, you'll likely make the decision and have the willpower to then direct your life and energy towards growth. Know thyself. Recognizing and fully understanding that only in this way can you address the challenges in your life. This is how you create within yourself this powerful energy that all the next steps on your path become easier and easier. Now, as with anything, the beginning is the hardest part. But what I've observed is that the people who believe they don't have enough willpower actually would have it if they directed their available energies into the right channels. If they just reset their inner direction. Okay. As long as you tell yourself you can manage without it, you won't act and you're going to continue as before. Taking the seemingly comfortable path often leads to stagnation, though. So, I mean, if you're finding yourself in this situation, maybe start thinking about what's truly important to you instead of avoiding those thoughts. Because you might realize that prioritizing your personal growth and well-being is necessary. It's essential. When the willpower is in there and it's tough to establish a daily routine, after seeking help, look within to find what's holding you back. If you're afraid, you might find something you'd rather keep hidden. Just remember that acknowledging and addressing these parts of yourself is crucial for growth. And the sooner these issues surface, the better and easier it is to deal with them. What's hidden tends to cause even more conflicts than what's recognized and integrated. I mean, even psychologists will tell you that ignoring your inner issues doesn't help, right? So think about, think about this, contemplate it. When you've overcome the initial difficulties and gained some mastery over yourself, the next steps in your path become clear. They just will. Life will present them to you. When you've learned to reflect in this way, you're going to know how to view every event of your daily life with open eyes from this new place. Understanding then the messages that they hold, the messages that you're being sent. And even those who have overcome the initial hurdles, I mean, they don't always use their quiet time in the best way either. I know I don't. Right? I, I might meditate or reflect too generally or... You know, there's been times, periods of my life when I just meditated or reflected in always the same way. Our reflections and intentions need to vary. We need to be able to sense the next step in our development. And if we're not aware of it, insight um, will come if you search honestly. Right. You can trust that. Turning your attention to what needs to be recognized, learned, overcome, accepted. So I would challenge you, like, are you willing to take on the challenge of finding your path toward personal growth and connecting with others in meaningful ways? In our world today, building genuine relationships and communities through personal growth and empathy is more important than ever. When we do that, our efforts become alive and dynamic through that connection. Again and again, make the commitment to face your inner truth with courage. Cultivate honest thoughts. Think things through clearly, independently. In that way, your personal growth becomes more productive because it's alive and constantly evolving. It's not going to get stuck in a rigid routine that just, you know, you're doing an automatic pilot. And so your relationship with yourself and with whatever you consider greater than yourself unfolds towards harmony. Anyway, I just wanted to share those thoughts with you today. I hope, I don't know, they helped you in some way, supported you some way to move a little further along your path. We're all in this together, each of us working on our own journey and connected, so connected in so many ways. If you ever want to talk more about this, 
I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm here for you. Love you. We'll connect soon.